director of a physical activity and sport company and she was a physical education teacher in primary and secondary education she has published over 65 scientific articles 15 book chapters one book and 70 papers in national international congresses she has participated in eight research projects four of them funded by the government of spain she has supervised several masters degree final projects doctoral thesis she has been a guest reviewer in several journals her research interests include physical education teaching sport and employment and gender and sport she plays she tennis and <laughs> recently she's been introduced to paddle so i just wanted her to know what paddle is on behalf of the ministry of youth affairs and sports government of india khelo india lectured by national college of physical education a warm welcome to one of the most distinguished speaker dr maria dolores uh, gonzales rivera ma'am mm -hmm. welcome you mm -hmm. i'd like to welcome kluka professor kluka it's an honor for us to have you amidst us a warm welcome to you i'd like to welcome rosa also to this session i welcome dr g kishore sir and all the invited delegates and dear participants once again a warm welcome to one and all may i request ma'am for the session please okay <laughs> thank you thank you very much uh, hello everyone i'm very happy to be here first of all i like to thank the ministry of youth on our sport of india for inviting me here today also i like to thank the organizers of this international program for their support what i'd like to present to you today is physical education in spain focusing on teaching competencies i uh, divided my presentation into three main parts after the introduction point i'll move on to the methodological uh, elements and then i go on to design the plan based on uh, teaching competencies as an example that here in spain teachers carry out the syllabus design in physical education over the last years a uh, physical education in spain and in general education has experienced changes in the way of teaching from a traditional teaching based on the transmission of contents to teaching competencies uh, according to the european commission societies experience significant digital and technological innovations and labor market changes and these changes demand new requirements in the implementation impl in implementation of competence oriented education training and learning that impact on the structure of curricular and the organization of learning so this teaching competencies as a strategy for lifelong learning was developed and published by international organizations like unesco that illuminated the delors report in 1996 and the european uh, commission council that uh, published uh, different documents about this educational uh, paradigm uh, since 1999 and the organization for economic cooperation and development that carry out the the seco project and the program for international assessment project uh, too and how affect these uh, documents for these international organizations in our system in the spanish education system um, we uh, education system the spanish education system uh, followed these recommendations in all uh, stages of education uh, from the last um, the last educational uh, law in uh, 2013 Uh, these stages uh, were, is now in a uh, higher uh, higher education in vocational training and in primary and secondary school uh, and in this presentation i'm going to focus on physical education in secondary school uh, and how does uh, the, this paradigm of lifelong learning affect our way of teaching uh, according to european commission uh, mainly we need a greater emphasis 
emphasis on interactive learning and teaching styles, new role of teachers, trainers and educators in guiding learning processes, and new approaches to assessment. And in 2006, European Commission published a recommendation on key competencies for lifelong learning. One of the main objectives was to, to identify and define the key competencies necessary for personal fulfillment, active citizenship, social cohesion, and employability in a knowledge society. So after uh, this introduction, let's now move on to the methodological elements that are necessary to understand how to plan based on teaching competencies. So the first element are key competence, like, uh, as I mentioned before, and this is a very important curricular element that is in our current uh, Spanish educational law. And all teachers uh, from all subjects have to uh, develop and, uh, and the students have to achieve. Okay, and uh, these uh, key competencies uh, was defined by, uh, by European Commission as a combination of knowledge, skills and attitudes appropriate to the context. And it's very important to highlight that uh, each competence has three components. Knowledge, skills and attitudes. And physical education teachers and in general all the system, educational system, have to develop this competence taking into account these three components. And how can do that? Okay, we are going to see in this uh, presentation. Um, the eight key competencies uh, established by the European Parliament and the Council were the following. Communication in the mother tongue, communication in foreign languages, mathematical competence and basic competencies in science and technology, digital competence, learning to learn, learning uh, social and civic competencies, sense of initiative and entrepreneurship, and the last one, cultural awareness and expression. Uh, and these uh, competencies have a things that play a role in all of them. These things are critical thinking, creativity, initiative, progress, problem solving, constructive management of feelings, risk assessment, and decision taking. So teachers, physical education teachers, have to manage to uh, develop uh, these important things when we are uh, educating through physical uh, activity and sport. Okay, so in Spain, uh, we adapt, adopted uh, these uh, competencies uh, and in fact, the key competencies list published by the Spanish Ministry of Education and Vocational Training is very similar to the one offered by European Parliament and the Council that I presented earlier. And it's mandatory that all teachers develop in their classes these seven competencies. We, are, we have seven because uh, our the Spanish ministry um, uh, joined uh, both of the, of the competencies that we uh, saw before, but uh, there is no uh, almost uh, changes in the competencies uh, from the European Union. Okay, and uh, I, I highlight uh, the competence, competence, digital competence, uh, because uh, we are going to see uh, this competence as an example to explain the process to plan teaching competencies uh, in physical education here in Spain. 
Okay, so we have uh, this example uh, from the website of the Spanish Ministry of Education, uh, and uh, we have uh, the different examples of different uh, competences. But uh, as, as I told you before, uh, we are going to, um, to, to put an example with a digital uh, competence. For example, uh, in this uh, website uh, of the Spanish Ministry of Education, um, we have ideas uh, to follow from the different uh, teachers from several uh, subjects uh, to follow and ideas to, um, to develop uh, this competence in the three components of each uh, competence. Okay? For example, we have uh, the component knowledge where the students have to achieve their rights and risks in the digital world. For a, another example is main computer applications and uh, information resources. Of course, through the content of physical education that we are going to, to see after. Uh, what about uh, skills? The skills in this digital competence, um, the ministry, Spanish Ministry of Education said that uh, we can uh, develop uh, sharing, obtaining and processing information, or for example, uh, creating uh, content uh, with application on physical education, or uh, another skill is using technological resources for communication and problem, uh, problem solving. Okay, and other important component is attitudes. Uh, we have to develop attitudes, for example, in this uh, digital uh, competence uh, through physical activity, but uh, educating uh, to the students, for example, having an active, critical and realistic attitude towards technologies and, uh, techno uh, and technological means. Another that is very important is uh, having curiosity and motivation for learning and improvement in the use of technologies. Another is respect for ethical principles. That is very important that from all subjects uh, we uh, uh, develop and the students achieve or obtain this uh, attitude. And the last one, for example, a seeing strengths and awareness of teaching means. So uh, from physical education, we have to manage uh, with our contents um, how to achieve uh, this uh, digital competence with other, like I told before. Okay, and then uh, we have uh, these curricular elements and we have the competence that uh, I explained before as an important curricular element, but uh, the current educational uh, law uh, contemplates other important curricular elements that teachers have to design to achieve the competencies. Uh, these other curricular elements are the objectives, general objectives that we are going to see, to see them, uh, contents, methodology, and assessment. Um, as I, as I told you, we are going to see all these curricular elements, but first I like to explain other important didactic elements in physical education syllabus design. For example, designing the timetable of contents that consists in organizing the contents of physical education throughout the whole year. Uh, we uh, usually organize these contents uh, through three th uh, trimesters. Th uh, trimesters. And um, uh, teachers uh, can choose uh, what contents uh, is uh, better uh, to, to teach first or to teach after. We have different contents that we are going to see uh, after um, uh, imposed or published by the Spanish ministry and we can organize according uh, our reality in, uh, in at schools. Okay, another um, uh, important didactic element is teaching and learning activities. 
Another one is didactic resources that we classify in three important resources, materials, spaces, and human resources. And we have, again, to design the, the best way to use these materials, these spaces, and these human resources to develop our important uh, subject, like is uh, physical education. Uh, another uh, important element that we have to design, and uh, it's important uh, for to achieve uh, different um, contents, uh, social contents, is a uh, cross elements. Why I say cross? Because it's very important the connection through different uh, subjects to develop these elements. For example. Uh, the subjects, the different subjects in one year, or in, in all the years in that state, uh, have to contribute the develop uh, the several uh, elements like, for example, um, equality gender, nutritional habits, or take care of environment. So uh, we have to plan with other professors, other teachers, uh, the best way to uh, achieve uh, these uh, cross elements. Uh, another uh, didactic element is the interdisciplinarity. Interdisciplinarity is, um, is uh, contemplated uh, in our syllabus design too, and consists to, uh, to like uh, cross elements, consists in connections among contents from different subjects to provide a greater meaning in learning contents and to achieve the objectives and uh, compet uh, competencies. Uh, for example, we don't have to, uh, we have to distinguish uh, between cross elements and interdisciplinarity. Cross elements, as I told you before, is uh, um, that contents um, about uh, educate in attitudes. Okay, but interdisciplinarity consists in connect the connection of contents of different um, subjects. For example, uh, we can uh, connect uh, our one of the contents in physical education, for example, body, body expression, with the subject music. And uh, we can, uh, with, between both um, subjects, uh, we can, the students uh, can achieve cap capacities to express uh, ideas and feelings through musical instruments and through body expression and dance. Other example uh, could be physical education uh, with the content, outdoor activities, uh, physical activities, um, uh, outdoor physical activities with uh, biology. Uh, for example, we are going to the environment, to the nature, uh, to do different uh, physical activity and sport, and uh, we can connect other um, contents with this subject, with biology, uh, to, um, to achieve uh, the different competence and in attitude and in skills and in knowledge, of course. But, but um, to this uh, purpose, it's uh, very important that uh, in, at school, all teachers um, plan together to achieve the competence uh, through our um, contents in our uh, subjects, of, of course. Okay. Um, other uh, didactic element is attention to diversity. This is very important too because teachers should provide all resources needed to adapt the process le learning to different characteristics of all students. Um, for, for example, our current uh, law. Um, not classify, but uh, um, we have different groups uh, of students, for example, that uh, they have uh, some disabilities or high intellectual uh, abilities, or students that arrive, arrive light to the Spanish uh, system, educational system, and they don't know how to speak Spanish, uh, we have to um, to manage, to design uh, different uh, contents, objectives, and, um, and material to adapt our uh, subject 
to these um, to these students. So we have to plan um, very careful uh, to achieve uh, from all students uh, the competence that uh, I, I I told you before. Okay. And uh, the last one is education innovation, educational innovation. This is very important. All of them <laughs> are very important elements, of course. And this, uh, the, the last one, is very important because it uh, consists in that uh, teachers could be immersed in educational innovation projects with the purpose of improving the teaching process. For example, uh, teachers can ask, how can through my subject or through with connection other subjects um, uh, plan uh, different activities to attention to diversity so uh, professors uh, could immerse in these projects innovation projects to face uh, this um, uh, this issue or this um, uh, this important um, uh, achievement okay uh, there are other topics. Uh, this education innovation could cover several topics uh, that teachers uh, can uh, choose based on their reality on, in their schools. Uh, our current uh, law uh, set uh, different topics that teachers uh, can, uh, can innovate, but uh, it's the decision of uh, teachers or the group of teachers in different uh, subjects that we can choose uh, according to our reality. Uh, for example, there are a lot of uh, topics, for example, methodological progression on teaching content or use of ICT in physical education. Uh, and this is very important. And uh, for example, when I was a um, physical education teacher in primary and secondary school, um, uh, maybe one project, one in educational innovation project, uh, last, last, uh, during, lasted during two years. And um, uh, other years, we can choose other educational innovation. Uh, when we had in 2013 uh, the new law that uh, we had to achieve the competence, the educational innovation was in this, in this topic. How to uh, plan and how to manage uh, our subjects, our contents to achieve uh, these uh, competencies. And now, nowadays, uh, a lot of teachers uh, in physical education in a, 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 a university too, but in primary and secondary and university, we are immersed in this innovation, educational, educational innovation projects uh, to achieve and to, to manage uh, these. Uh, this new way to, to plan. Yeah, um, no. I could just in uh, the Marlon. Sorry? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Could, could you put a question for them in the chat box? Could, could you ask, ask them a question and put the answer in the chat box so we can have water to drink? Okay. <laughs> you ask a question to them, uh, this innovations. You could ask uh, teachers okay. of the are very constructive. They can give you a lot of ideas. Let's okay. see what the answer. Can you put one question, please? Okay, you have you have any question about uh, you could put up the question with education innovation what they have ideas. Okay, you could put that you could put that and then you can take a water break. Okay, and um, and I can I can uh, put uh, more ideas or you have any you, questions? You can, you can I... ask a question to a participant. Okay, I can ask question or, uh, for uh, teachers. No, you can just ask. Maybe I can speak on your behalf or for all the information participants. Could you ki kindly come up with some uh, educational innovation which. Uh, Ma Marlon right now spoke what any ideas you can share maybe for 30 seconds so Marlon you can have yes, some water Marlon have some water yes mm -hmm. water to drink yes. yeah mm -hmm. you could drink some water you get a break yes, 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 yes. So, you can look at the chat box I think they have they have understood they'll be answering yes I don't know whether you answered I'm not sure yeah you could you could continue I'm sorry I just I, just, I thought you could have some water to drink yes don't worry. You could continue, please. Uh, can I continue? Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and maybe I, I'm going very fast or it's okay? It's okay. Fine. Fine. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, we, we saw 
the different uh, didactic elements. And now we are going to uh, move on the curricular elements that we saw uh, before. And one of them is the objectives, okay? Um, uh, we have uh, different uh, general objectives and the ministry, or uh, Spanish Ministry of Education and Vocational Training defined them uh, as a referring to the achievements that the students might reach and the end of the each educational process as a result of internationally planned a teaching learning experience for this purpose. So here uh, we have the different uh, objectives uh, of secondary education and from all um, subjects we have to develop and the students uh, have to achieve. Okay, um, we have 12 and uh, some of them there are, for example, to prepare for the exercise of democratic scientific, uh, citizenship, develop and consolidate habit, habits of discipline and study and individual and team work. This is very important. Another important objective is valuing and respecting the difference of the sexes and the equality or rights on opportunities between them, uh, to strengthen their affective capacity, capacities in their relationship with others. Another is to, to develop basic skills on the use of information from critical sense, uh, to conceive scientific knowledge as integrated uh, knowledge. Uh, another important objective is develop self-confidence. Uh, another one is to understand and express correctly Spanish language and foreign languages, mainly um, uh, English. To value and respect the, um, our cultural heritage, heritage and our object, uh, objective of this uh, subject is to incorporate physical education uh, and pra the practice of a sport to promote personal and social development. And the last one is to appreciate artistic creation and understand the language of the different artistic expression. And once again, we have to connect the different uh, subjects to achieve uh, these objectives, for example, in a secondary school. Move on the curricular other curricular element like contents. Um, we have uh, the definition from Spanish Ministry of Education uh, that defined them as a set of knowledge that is ordered in subject. Uh, the contents have the three components that we saw uh, in the competence two. We have knowledge to develop, we have skills, and we have attitudes. And uh, we have to contribute to the achievement of the objectives and to the acquisition of competencies in all educational states. What are the contents in physical activity uh, in, in, our, in our subject, uh, physical education? We have a four important group, group of, of contents. We have sports that uh, teachers uh, in secondary school and in primary school uh, had to choose different uh, sports, uh, individual or team sports according our uh, the resources in, at the school. We have outdoor physical activities. Uh, we have body expression and dance. And we have physical activity and health. And it's be very important to note that all teachers, it's mandatory that all teachers in every year uh, develop all these group of contents. 
it's not possible that one teacher uh, develop sports and uh, don't uh, develop body expression. No? And that's why, why from the, uh, we make sure that from uh, the primary school to secondary school, uh, all uh, students achieve uh, different sports, different outdoor physical activities, uh, the orientation, physical activity uh, with health, and of course, body expression. Okay. So, uh, other important uh, curricular element is the methodology. Uh, we have to ask how to teach all different elements that we saw until now. And um, uh, teachers have to decide how to teach asking different questions and planning different elements, like uh, teaching methods. Uh, we have uh, two big groups in teaching methods, inductive, added, uh, didactic, uh, didactic methods, uh, didactic, uh, didactic resources, teaching strategies that we have uh, analytical strategies, uh, global strategies and mixed strategies. And we have uh, uh, two elements, methodological elements that, that is teaching styles and teaching techniques. And we are going now focusing on these two uh, elements. Okay, uh, here uh, we have uh, different teaching styles that uh, professors uh, we can uh, use to teach the different uh, contents. Uh, Viciana and Delgado develop uh, a continuum that we can see here of uh, teaching styles uh, and this is very important to know that these uh, teaching styles go from a greater teacher uh, directivity to le uh, and less student activity to uh, less uh, direct directivity from teachers and more student activity. I'm going to explain uh, to you this. Uh, we have uh, two big groups, reproductive techniques and productive techniques. Reproductive techniques are those that um, teaching, uh, 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 when teachers first give all the information to the students and they have to follow and to practice through physical activity. Okay? And on the other hand, we have productive uh, techniques that is refers when students have to discover the contents with the guide of teachers. So uh, in, in our introduction, we said that um, new teaching styles and techniques uh, are needed to develop the competencies. So, uh, the, mm, so the styles that we have here and where, where teacher is less directivity um, is mm, the best way to teach the different contents and to achieve the objectives and competence. But in my opinion, uh, based on different authors, I will have to manage a combination of all uh, teaching styles. Emphasis, a greater emphasis, of course, in participatory styles, social styles, and cognitive and creative styles. Participatory styles um, consists in uh, um, uh, uh, students uh, can participate in the process learning. For example, we have reciprocal teaching where uh, students uh, can um, uh, give a feedback other students and participate in this process learning. That's why we can achieve skills and aptitudes to some different competencies. 
other, uh, other styles that we can use to achieve the competencies is social uh, styles that uh, consists in in the middle of the classes or at the beginning or at the, the end of the classes, um, the teachers uh, should um, provide uh, different um, strategies uh, to discuss some content of physical education. For example, we have Felix 66 or brainstorming and consists in create an atmosphere uh, where uh, students can discuss about the, the topic that, um, that uh, propose uh, the teachers. And uh, the cognitive uh, styles are very interesting too uh, because uh, these uh, styles, um, the teachers don't give the information before. Uh, the, the, the students have to discover uh, through uh, progress, uh, resolving problems, um, what is the, the um, what is the the result? What is, uh, for example, uh, the students can uh, teachers sorry uh, can ask questions to the students, and they are going to discover the problem, the the solution. Okay, so uh, this is a way. Uh, to uh, manage in a class um, uh, some uh, the, the contents and they have to think about uh, different uh, results. Okay. And finally, uh, we have uh, another curricular element, the assessment, that uh, is very important too. And our Spanish current, current law um, established two elements. Evaluation criteria and learning standards. The evaluation criteria consists uh, in uh, describing what teachers want to assist and what the student must, must achieve. And they respond to what is intended to be achieved in each subject. Okay, uh, to develop this evaluation criteria in the last and the current uh, law, we have a very important element that is learning standards. That they are specifications of the evaluation criteria that allow the learning results to be defined and which must be observable, measurable, and permit the performance or achieve reach to be graduated. And this is very important issue that the, to evaluate uh, one competence uh, is uh, pr precise that the teachers observe the behavior of students. That's why we can evaluate this uh, criteria. Okay, and uh, in this point, I'd like to offer you one example about how to plan teaching competencies. Okay. A teacher can follow four steps to plan competencies. So uh, we have the step one. This is an example based on different uh, authors. And usually, physical education teachers use these uh, four steps. Uh, one of them, uh, the first one, is to establish a connection between competencies with other curricular elements. The second stop, uh, step is to define uh, descriptors. The third step is to set indicators of achievement. And the last one is to set achievement levels. And now, uh, in this uh, last part of my presentation, we are going to see the uh, four um, steps. The first one, eh, we are going to see uh, in practical way. No? Uh, the first one, as I uh, mentioned before, is to establish a connection between competencies with other curricular elements. How can do that? 
how can do uh, physical education do that? Uh, we um, usually um, have a, a table that uh, here uh, we have the different competence that we have to competencies that we have to achieve and we have here the curricular elements that is mandatory to develop according to our current law that uh, as I mentioned before. So it's the moment that the teachers have to choose which objectives can achieve one competence. For example, uh, we, we have the general objectives and, and, and we say, okay, this objective, this objective, and this objective, I choose to achieve this competence. And other competence to other uh, competence, and we are going to uh, uh, um, uh, writing these objectives in this table. The same with the contents uh, that is in the law, the assessment criteria, and the learning standards. And that's why teachers make sure the coherence among the curricular elements to achieve the all competence and to develop the contents of physical education. Okay, uh, once we have very clear uh, the connection of different uh, curricular elements, we can go to define descriptors. Descriptors are, uh, as uh, is in an infinitive statement, that specifies, specifies the key competence in an operative element for physical education subject. And uh, these uh, descriptors um, uh, should um, uh, define for, uh, for teachers. No? For example, we have digital competence and they can, we can uh, write uh, how can uh, achieve this digital competence. And if I choose physical activity and sport in general or physical qualities, I can say, okay, to develop this competence, uh, the students have to demonstrate a skill in managing ICT to obtain information on physical activity and sport. Or another descriptor uh, should be, uh, could be to manage digital application to work on improving basic physical qualities. So uh, that there are uh, descriptors and uh, the teachers uh, say, okay, with these descriptors, I can observe the behavior of our uh, students to, say, to, to, to know if they achieve or obtain uh, this competence. And when we have the different descriptors, we can establish uh, some indicators for each descriptor. Descriptors uh, usually uh, have um, three, four descriptors from each competence. Uh, that's to say, uh, we have uh, big descriptors. No? And after that, we are going to concrete in standards. Um, in, in the standard learning standards, okay? And the indicators is a precise, precise statement that determines observable behavior based on a descriptor of a key competence. And once again, we have to observe a student performance in a problem situation. This is very important. So uh, we have um, uh, some recommendation uh, to um, write, to develop the different indicators. Uh, usually, we use uh, a verb, conjugated verb. Uh, we have to uh, specify the contents and we have to specify the context. Okay, and here we have an example with the same digital competence. No? Uh, we had the descriptors that I, we said before, this one and this one, and the indicators 
uh, allow us how to uh, observe this descriptor. For example, uh, performs a search for information on different spots, differentiating uh, uh, between reliable and unreliable information. Another descriptor could be use different digital resources to assess the required information about sport, sports games. And here we can see that uh, students have to manage different digital resources to uh, achieve the information about sports games. No? Another example with the other descriptor is use different digital applications correctly to work on basic physical qualities and experience different activities to work on basic physical activity from this digital application. Now, nowadays, in our schools, uh, we have to manage uh, students, have to manage a uh, different uh, digital application uh, to, uh, for example, um, uh, um, uh, do uh, physical uh, qualities. No? And they have to, 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 to say, to be independent, to use these digital applications. And the last step, the step four, is to set achievement levels. This is uh, very important to uh, qualificate for the qualification. Okay. Uh, first, we have to uh, keep in mind that the indicators based on the descriptor, descriptors is the first step in the elaboration of the achievement levels. So we start from indicators to graduate the different levels and we have to uh, write to explain different items and graduate how can do that usually and according to the to our uh, law we can use a rubric as evaluation instrument and here we have an example uh, we have the same example, the same competence, digital competence. We have the indicators that we, we saw before, and it's the moment to graduate the behavior of our students. And uh, here is an example of the rubric with only four levels, but it's usual to, um, to add uh, one level more or uh, 10 levels. And according to the behavior of the students, we can uh, qualificate, we can assess. Okay, this student is in process of achievement, or this student achieved this digital competence, uh, is optimal achievement or excellent achievement. And we have to put here uh, each indicator with the different levels and uh, set uh, and qualificate uh, if the students has achieved, obtained this competence. <laughs> so, uh, in conclusion, uh, I like uh, to say that to plan teaching competencies is a very important process where physical education teachers have to reflect and specify in the syllabus design to provide acceptable teaching and learning for students in the paradigm of lifelong learning. So I hope this example about how to plan here in Spain have been useful uh, for our teachers and trainers. So uh, thank you for listening to me. If you have any question, I'd be happy to answer uh, to answer them. Thank you. Thank you for listening to me. <laughs> oh, Marlon, it was a wonderful session, very informative. So you don't find the attendance going down. All wanted, yes. they want in Hindi. And I think uh, what we'll do is whatever you spoke, we'll get it translated in Hindi for the for the information of participants. We'll get it translated in Hindi and give that presentation for you. I, I am repeating this, all the participants. All those who'd like to get it in the language of Hindi will get that done for you. And the session was so informative. 
and um, over to dr sanjay for the questions please okay thank you sanjay for the questions please thank you yeah. oh. first of all it is very uh, fruitful session ma'am thank you so the question is how to develop the competencies in a school for p teachers sorry can, can you repeat because the, the the connection is not good sorry can yeah. can you repeat sorry be able, be able. how to develop the competencies in a school for p teachers in its school yeah. how to develop competencies in yes. school uh, for for ah, information yes. of uh, uh, merlin we do not follow this procedure uh -huh. this but we are coming in line so they may not understand what a rubric is yes what are these competencies and how yes. can we achieve the competencies is the question put yes yes uh, as i explained uh, to you we have uh, different uh, steps okay and the rubric is the last step that allow allow to uh, to qualificate to put a qualification for uh, from students okay but first uh, we have to connect all a step uh, that i uh, told you before because it's not is is very uh, it's very difficult in fact uh, here in spain <laughs> i give a lot of conference <laughs> about this uh, how to teach or how to achieve uh, the different competence because it's very important to uh, start from the descriptors to the competence and to do all uh, steps to achieve the competencies is uh, a, a process no it's not difficult but uh, when we have uh, and, and and have all uh, steps uh, we can do it uh, the the important things are two <coughs> one that uh, 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 as i said before uh, all subjects uh, are connected to achieve the competencies because the competence is for all subjects but through our uh, content we can achieve this 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 competencies and another one is um, is a uh, follow very careful the different steps to uh, have a coherence between all uh, elements this is very important yeah thank you mm -hmm. yeah okay. i don't know no, if no. i i answer your question <laughs> yeah. yeah the next question since the world is fighting with the covid covid totally good. so yeah. can you repeat please yes since the world is fighting with the covid coronavirus yes okay mm -hmm. so when we are talking about the curriculum framework how to develop the curriculum so how to frame the curriculum after the covid uh -huh. what are the things that we have to keep in mind yes yes yeah, this, uh, that's you, sorry yes that is very important a uh, very important question uh, because uh, precisely precisely uh, now because of the new situation uh, and yeah. now competence um, have more important uh, because okay uh, we have our content that of course is very important we have to move we have to do exercise but with uh, this competence allow to manage this new situation for example i explained to you um, the digital competence okay so uh, now uh, uh, now at the school a lot of uh, teachers physical education teachers uh, uh, thank you for because they uh, the, the students uh, how uh, manage the digital competence they can work at home uh, uh, the different uh, um, physical education contents and, and, and now uh, we are realize that the competence is very important for this new situation because they uh, they now uh, we I, I, I told you before uh, digital competence but mathematical mathematical and uh, attitudes and all and, and now um, uh, it's very important to achieve this competence with this new situation and how mm, through physical activity can achieve this uh, this competence this is very important now and and this process that i explained uh, before uh, is very good in this new situation because uh, we design very careful the new resources 
and the new spaces, spaces that we have to manage with the coronavirus. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Over to Usha, ma'am. Thank you. Question which is coming. How does European law deal with slower learners and special need kids? What kind of curriculum do European law follow? Okay. Yes, uh, it depends on the countries. Uh, I explained uh, to you the, uh, my country, uh, Spain, uh, but uh, other uh, countries uh, from uh, the Union, Europe, European Union uh, have developed. Uh, some countries uh, follow um, more the competencies uh, from the, the Parliament, uh, you know, uh, European Parliament, and another, they change uh, more. But in general, uh, I, I, know, I, I know the educational system of France and Portugal and the uh, UK, and in, in general, we follow uh, these uh, competencies. Um, but uh, in different countries, countries, we have different uh, ways to design or different uh, ways or different elements. But the competencies in general, uh, the, the different countries uh, follow in, in more and less uh, measure. Okay. The in, Lord, Spain, in Spain, yes, in Spain, the Lord all question. of them. In Spain, all of them. We say, the, okay, okay, we are, we are, we agree, we agree. Wait, the lot of questions, but I will I'll say, give you a mail so that they could ask them, and I think that would okay. be much better. And it's okay. very translated in Hindi so that they can understand. Okay. But you're people full with energy after a marathon. <laughs> I'm so, happy. Yeah. Thank you very much. May I I'm ask happy. Rosa? Rosa, your remarks, please. Okay. Thank you very much, Marilyn, for this. I'm saying, Marilyn, this is her nickname, okay? Maria Dolores yes. is her name. But, you know, I'm a friend's Marilyn. Mar so, thank you very much for this pedagogical presentation. I, I enjoyed so much because you really brought the audience through the general information related with uh, the fundamentals and the theoretical framework of physical education in the European context. And then you brought it to the uh, curriculum in Spain with particular elements. And, part yes. and there is one important element that is competence and how we achieve them. Because it's, if you check in many, I won't say all, because not all countries work with competence, okay? Others yes. prefer to refer to purposes or potentials, okay? Yes. There are different uh, ideological, um, I would say, uh, views in terms of how to approach that. But in the long run, all want to achieve the well development of the human being. Mm -hmm. Now, so I think you achieve uh, to bring us all that perspective. And the most important part, which is rarely explained, is how to achieve each one of those elements from the interdisciplinary perspective to get the competence. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you have lots of questions, and it will be very selfish for me just to ask the question I want you to uh, <laughs> to reply. So yeah. I want to pick one. I want to pick one that is in in the screen, and actually yeah. it's from yeah. Beatrice. But I don't know if we have time to everybody, all of us, to speak. But there is interdisciplinarity. I mean, it is all these goals that all these competence that you are indicating, and the way it is done. It is an, an, in an ideal way, or are you really achieving this in Spain? I mean, mm -hmm. this, is, uh, this is one question. And okay. the other element, it's the written documents, most of the time they're beautiful. Now, mm -hmm. how to achieve them? I mean, mm -hmm. how, because it's, now comes an element of how to train teachers to achieve that. So mm -hmm. how are you doing that in Spain for this continuous education, so to transform teachers' behavior to achieve that. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you for your questions. Yes, uh, the first uh, question, uh, yes, uh, um, competence, the orientation of lifelong uh, learning uh, is uh, from uh, the last, uh, and our current uh, law from uh, 2013. And for us, for teachers, it's more complicated to achieve the competence 
but not more the objectives. Okay, because um, uh, the te teachers have how to plan to uh, achieve the objectives, the general objectives. Okay, and uh, it's not a issue, difficult issue to achieve it, um, to achieve them. Uh, for example, and in physical education, uh, it's very it's easy because um, physical the contents we have uh, contents that we have to educate in attitudes, in uh, respect, uh, equality, gender, uh, our content. Our, our yes, our general content uh, we achieve very, very, very easy. Uh, we, of course, if teachers orientate the the um, uh, our teaching well, but uh, our own content we can achieve the general objectives. The problem is when we have the competence. The other, the other uh, mm -hmm. step more. No? In Spain, the objectives uh, we can achieve, uh, it depends on the teachers, but uh, generally with an interdisciplinarity um, uh, uh, subjects, uh, with subjects, uh, we, we can achieve. It's not, it's not difficult because it's about, uh, I told you, uh, equality gender, um, uh, to be active. Uh, it's not, uh, if we plan very well, uh, we, we can achieve it, achieve them. Yes, and Good. and the other question, uh, uh, what's about? Sorry, can you can you remind me? And and I said that it looks very well. I mean, in the written part. So, but how are you doing to make teachers in service uh, yes. really achieve that? I mean, our, because yes. it's also a change of attitude. I mean, we have trained we train PE teachers. But once yes. they graduate, I mean, this continuous education process, who does it? Is it the universities alone or it is the government who's, who's in the process to do this, uh, I would say, follow up? Yes, of yes. Thank you. Yes. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, the Ministry of Education in, 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 the, in his uh, website, uh, we have a different uh, recommendations that we can follow. But in the reality, in, uh, in the, in at, at schools, um, some professors have to attend uh, different uh, uh, programs uh, and courses to, uh, to achieve or to design how to achieve the competence. Because it's, uh, I, I, I summarize uh, some steps, but for teachers it's very difficult and uh, they have to, to, um, to, uh, to, 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 um, to do a lot of hours and to, to be together uh, to plan uh, these uh, competencies. And now uh, the government uh, is uh, providing uh, courses, and I, 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 I always in conference <laughs> to, to, to teach uh, how uh, physical education teachers can, can do it. The last one uh, was very interesting, was precisely in a, in a, in a, in a dance uh, school. In a dance school, yes, yes, because they have uh, other other method, and I was uh, three days there uh, teaching how to teach uh, different uh, competencies. And now uh, teachers are, are uh, training on that. Okay. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you very much. Very good, Mali. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you Reza. And um, I think Marlon will be inviting you for a workshop. You're going to have for our teachers too. <laughs> yes, that's great teacher. Thank you. Now, Kluka, Kluka, for your remarks, please. Arlen, fantastic. <laughs> Thank it's you. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, this is um, any time that there is a, a change in the way people think, we mm -hmm. have to have some help getting to that perspective. Uh, I know that uh, in, in our country, uh, we still struggle with all of this, uh, just mm -hmm. as Europe, just as uh, Asia, just as uh, um, Venezuela and uh, Brazil. Yes. I think the question that we have to ask ourselves, each one of us, is why are we doing this? You know, mm -hmm. why are we changing? Why are we doing this? And 
these are just a couple of my thoughts that might help people um, understand that we need to take the emphasis off of the teacher mm -hmm. and saying how good is the teacher and say how good are the students. Mm -hmm. So in that, um, we want to develop the entire child. The focus has to be on what are they learning and what can they do rather than how good do I look to the, to the principal or to the person that I report to. Yeah. And part of that, these rubrics have always been and continue to be a challenge for me Mm -hmm. Because I have to find a f kind of a physical way to prove that I can, somebody can see what, what the child is doing and then provide feedback. So yeah. if we think as humans, as, as the teacher, if we think, how can I provide feedback to the student, but also to the parents, yeah. all right, because we want to keep the parents involved if possible, then we'll be able to focus on the child for a child-centered understanding and learning. But at the same time, um, we will also uh, be able to help the teachers see where they need additional education to make this work. Yes. Um, this is just me, in, in, no matter where I've been. Everybody yes. at the government level is very eager to put money into programs for <laughs> youth, for whomever. But they forget mm -hmm. to put the money in the teachers and the coaches because if they don't know what they're doing, how can you ever get a good outcome? So um, to help us to understand what the government does or anyone does to help the teachers and coaches get this new way of thinking. Yes, yes, <laughs> thank you. Uh, yes, um, for example, uh, they uh, have a uh, ministry uh, provide uh, different, um, uh, different rubrics, uh, example of rubrics, to, uh, to, um, uh, to, to help to the, 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 prof the, the teachers and professors at the university too, okay? Um, yep. the, the, thing, the thing is that the rubric, I think that is very important uh, um, instrument of evaluation because I, I, in my presentation, I said, okay, the teachers uh, can uh, observe the mm -hmm. behavior of students and can, but I forgot to say something very important, that uh, uh, this uh, rubric uh, is, uh, is possible, or is, um, I, I think that it's good that the students um, uh, uh, evaluate uh, uh -huh. their uh, uh, own uh, behavior, okay? Mm -hmm. And we, have, uh, we can contrast. As I, uh, they have uh, his uh, own, um, sorry, his own uh, behavior. Okay, I'm in here, I'm here, I'm here. And we can construct with other uh, students or and with uh, the, 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 prof the, the teachers and professors, okay? And uh, only the qualification is not only from the professor, the teacher or professors, okay? Mm -hmm. Is uh, uh, in process uh, to auto-evaluation, I think that is uh -huh. in, in English, yeah? outside the evaluation, or co-evaluation, co co okay? And this uh, this is uh, one important thing to the problem sometimes is that we have a lot of students we have a lot of mm -hmm. students here in spain the ratio uh, teacher students is 130 students and sometimes uh, according to the the question from rosa this is difficult to to, to go that's why i always explain very well the different steps and the different um, the different possibilities according our our resources okay mm -hmm. but uh, i'm very optimist <laughs> as, as you can see <laughs> i'm very very optimist and and a lot of uh, professors and a lot of teachers they are uh, doing great great uh, work 
to achieve this new parad paradigm. Uh, uh, you asked before, or you said, that why we have to, to change the paradigm. And I, I said, okay, because things change. Uh, the things change. We have uh, uh, other, other way to, to think. Uh, we uh, have other materials. We have internet. And we have to manage, uh, uh, we have to, to go ahead. Uh, and my students at university uh, always ask me, because I, 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 teach, I, I teach this subject in, at university, I always ask me, and if you, uh, uh, if you learned with the transmission uh, teaching, and maybe you are intelligent, uh, and now it's not, that doesn't work, Yes, it doesn't work because now we change. When I I I learned before uh, the the society and the, the the way of communication were different, and now we are going ahead and we have to change education. I always say the same statement: education is always changing. If we if we don't change the education, we don't go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> if I may add one more thing, uh, and then I'll be quiet. The, okay. if, if all of the participants want to look online, uh, Google in or whatever you're using, um, uh, a physical education rubrics examples. And oh my goodness, you will find many, many examples that may give you some ideas as to yeah. how to judge um, um, uh, human movement, you know, actual, the actual physical activity, but also if you have them do papers or videos or something, there will also be rubrics yes. for those kinds of things. And uh, Marilyn, that might be a way to, uh, how do I say, back into or back into mm -hmm. um, what you're talking about so that they would have more concrete examples, then they can mm -hmm. attach that to the bigger concepts. That's just yes. a thought. Yes, yes, thank you. Yes. Well done. Thank you, Claudia. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> I would say, you. you know, I don't know from where did Marlene get so much of energy? Hope she's taken something to boost herself. So I know <laughs> the secret of this energy. I don't know. She's talking <laughs> with energy. And I, I think you gave something to look at too. So she started moving. <laughs> That's a <size. laughs> so Beatrice, are you around? Can I talk to you? Beatrice is there? Yeah, hi. Yeah. Hi, Beatrice. Hi, How hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> well, very good presentation. Thank it's you. always very nice and good to see how Spain is organizing the physical education system. Thank and uh, you. with your charisma, I'm sure that <laughs> you changed the life of people. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's right. Thank you very no, much. I, I have only one question. Okay. Um, in your experience teaching and also giving conference, what kind of barriers do you perceive that people have to achieve the goals of this key competence or interdisciplinarity. You know, what barrier do you perceive that people, how difficult it is for some people or someone is it, but based on your experience. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, the question is, uh, what is more easier to, to achieve? The, what competencies? No, no you are, I, want, I want to give you your opinion. Okay. When it, you, you see what's the problem people problem. have with change behavior, what kind of barrier that they have? It's personal yes. or social or what? Yes, yes. The problem is that uh, uh, we uh, have all, uh, always, uh, we, we don't change. Uh, we always uh, uh, think about the contents. The contents is very important, of course, of course. And the contents in physical education more than in other, <laughs> in other subjects. It's very important. Uh, but, um, but the problem is that we are, um, uh, uh, sorry, we are still uh, in uh, um, focusing, focusing in contents, not go more ahead. And when I uh, give a conference, uh, the first step, my first step is not explain this. My first step is, okay, we are going to think about uh, what is the way uh, to change our mentality, not only in contents, that is an element very important to achieve, 
the competence. That is the problem, that we have to change uh, still the, the mentality. And, and uh, to know, and other thing is that uh, I presented uh, uh, you in this uh, presentation, is uh, have to, um, uh, tener claro, uh, to make sure that we know the different steps to, um, to, to design, because it's not, it's not possible. Because a lot of, um, a lot of students, a lot of uh, teachers uh, that I, when I give a conference, they say, okay, I, I know, I know that this, this is very important and we have to achieve all the competence uh, in three components, knowledge, skills, and attitudes, okay? This is, they, they, they know that, but they say, how can do it? And that's why I try to explain the coherence with all different elements, curricular and, and didactic elements. Yes, that, this is the, the, that I perceive. Okay, <laughs> but, thank but you. But there are teachers, uh, wow. I, and I learned uh, from teachers to do that. <laughs> so, yeah, okay, that's good. good. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Beatrix. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Dr. Kishosla? Yeah, thank you, Dr. Usha. Once again, I will join the panel, all the panelists to congratulate uh, respected Dr. Maria Jorros Gonsalves Rivera uh, for an excellent presentation. In fact, I was listening it very, uh, you know, keenly. On, mainly on account, I just wanted to, the European competency in physical education is uh, depicted in the presentation by uh, Dr. Marilna, Maria Go uh, Dolores. Mm -hmm. So, with the competency, you know, is depicted, you know, how seriously they plan, how seriously they execute in each each segment of uh, plan, physical education curriculum planning about the teaching competency, timetable, uh, learning activity, and other interdisciplinary innovations and educational innovations. So innovations have been given a very key role, very key uh, element in PE of uh, Spain. And also you see the curriculum elements which has been very uh, scientifically structured with the sports that do outdoor body expression and physical activity. And, sec and it is separated. You can see that it is separated for the secondary, uh, secondary, elementary and so on. So, mm -hmm. It is something for us to be as Dr. Rusha has uh, rightly pointed out. We need to study it carefully because in India we are now trying to, and uh, now we are uh, now we have taken decision to uh, make physical education a part of curriculum. So when we make it a part of curriculum, we must have ex experiences of the best curriculums in the world. Mm -hmm. So the European model, which we are uh, presented to us, shows the competency and innovation and also digital competency. You see now it is, we are all facing this great challenge pandemic and uh, digital competency also is very important here. That also MADMAS uh, very categorically stated that di digital competency, they have a separate uh, you know, segment which builds into this. So I, I think this will throw light on uh, allowing the students to, to perform the individual and group educational activities considering the individual uh, needs and capabilities. So, you know, you can make it the group's uh, individual's needs and accordingly we can plan for different groups. So, mm -hmm. if you look into this, what is evident is that, you know, the, if you explore the results of why Spanish uh, sporting culture and why Spain is doing very well in uh, uh, sports, in excellence, mm -hmm. I Thank think you. this is the base. Their uh, mm -hmm. competency in physical education is their base. I think mm -hmm. that is why uh, I find that, you know, they are doing very well. And I was just exploring you, the, your uh, competency, you know, in Olympic sports where they have got 46 gold medals as of now, out of which 107 individual medals, gold medals. See, mm -hmm. the country of Spain, you know, how much of, uh, and they have 64 silver medals. Mm -hmm. uh, and Spanish league is one of the best league in the world now. Spanish league yes. uh, and, and you know the best best teams participate Real Madrid, Barcelona and you know all the best teams in the world one of the most sought after 
and you know they have got the greatest stars rafael nadal and uh, one of in uh, now who is uh, excelling in uh, you know who has been one of the wonders so mm -hmm. and also you see if you say take into barcelona is a sporting city which has hosted the 1992 olympics and mm -hmm. it was spectacular olympics time and madrid do have got it i think last yeah. you know they, they were competing with tokyo for uh, madrid yeah. i think like <laughs> martin they putting they slipped but otherwise so we today i think uh, dr Mar medial presentation revealed that uh, their excellence is two factors one is the well structured scientific physical education uh, you know uh, competency which they have established in spain mm -hmm. second is the club system you know like the best clubs in the world mm -hmm. uh, and the, the leagues which are going on there so this can be a really a model which we can uh, we can take a lot of advantage i congratulate once again dr maria dolores gonzalez revel for your great uh, excellent presentation and thank you. Uh, thank you so much for sparing your valuable time and also okay. i uh, especially you know thank all the panelists all from different from rosa ma'am beatrice ma'am dalna ma'am sita ma'am everyone uh, for your uh, uh, extraordinary support and remarkable work thank you very much thank you good day thank you mm -hmm. thank you uh manin the secret behind your energy what is you <laughs> what is it in spain all are, all are like this spanish yes. okay next time i talk to you in spanish so on behalf of the ministry of youth affairs and sports government of india uh, mm -hmm. hello india's lakshmi mm -hmm. bai national college of physical education you can see this the yes yes it's nice it's nice i really yeah. like but yes. uh, today was the day where she attained mark marcher like mm -hmm. so yes. she's the, the queen of jansi wow and a principal dr g kishore and mm -hmm. all the panelists and all the participants Mm -hmm. I need to thank you so much. Thank you. Salute you. Yeah. And, and, and uh, I don't know how to say thank because we look forward to you mm -hmm. because we want to learn more. And this platform sure. is very entertaining. And thank you so much. And sure. an invitation to India too. To yeah, today. sure. <laughs> I enjoy it a lot. And thank you very much for your attention. Oh. And wherever you want, uh, we have your. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Rosa. Thank you so much for bringing in Marlin, or else I don't think we would have had it. Thank you so much, Rosa. I'd like to thank Luca. Thank you so much, Luca, for your gracious presence. I'd also thank Breitris. You are here. Thank you so much. I'd like to thank Dr. G. Kishore sir for all the support. I'd like to thank all the invited delegates and the participants. But before we end up, tomorrow we have a very interesting session with one of our alumnus and his scholars, the research assistants and the graduate assistant, taking up a wonderful project, which would be a good, which would be a learning experience for the PE participants. So please do join us tomorrow. It's going to be a very interesting, informative sharing. And there are some who are looking forward to higher studies. I think that this session will be very informative for them. So please do make it a point of joining this se this session tomorrow. So once again, I wind up. You can just close this and get all the panelists in, please, so I can see everybody. Panelists, all of them. Can you bring everybody to stop screen? So once again, thank you so much to each one of you, and namaste. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank Bye. you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Look forward to you. Yeah. Thank you. you need more sessions. Thank you, Rosa. <laughs> thank you, Kluka, Beatrice, Kishosa. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. <laughs>
Tomorrow's uh, we have a uh, uh, besides Sakaria, we have Polina from Ukraine and Shabazz Khan, and it's going to be very interesting because uh, Zakaria is going to give out. I think so. We could also call some of our athletes, um, which could be of benefit. I mean, I think that would be great. Thank you, sir.